Hello my internet friends, John Gibson here with I Need Examples. Today I'm going to show you four powerful Excel IF functions to help make you an Excel Pro. IF, IF ERROR, IF and A, and IF S. The IF function is used to return one value if a condition is true and another value if it is false. The IF function has three arguments that are required. Logic test, this is what we are testing. Value if true, this is what will be displayed if our logic test is true. Value of false, this is what will be displayed if our logic test is false. In this example, we want to find if we stayed within budget using the projected budget and the actual budget values. To check if we stayed in budget, we will use the following formula. Equals if, open parentheses, A2 is greater than or equal to B2, comma, that is our logic test, double quote, in budget, double quote, this is the value if it is true, comma, double quote, over budget, double quote, and close parentheses. As you can see, the results in rows three, four, and six are in budget, since the projected budget is less than or equal to the actual budget. If error returns a value, you specify if a formula evaluates to an error. Otherwise, it returns the results of the formula. The if error function syntax has the following arguments. Value. This is a required argument. This is the argument that is checked for an error. Value if error. This is also a required argument. This is the value that is returned if the formula evaluates to an error. We will be using our billing invoice as an example on how to use the if error function. In our invoice, we have two line items, item 1 and item 2. We have created a formula in the price column that reads equals open parentheses C9 times D9 close parentheses minus E9. This formula will get our quantity times price minus discount. We also have a formula for invoice subtotal, which gives us the sum of our price column a formula for sales tax, and a formula for our total. Each one of these formulas are dependent on other cells in the invoice. So if there is an error in one of the formulas, then it can cascade throughout the invoice. For example, let's put in a discount for item 1. If we put in $1, then the values in the invoice update is expected. But if we put a value such as X, then all the formulas would return a value error. To fix this, let's start with the total formula. Click on the total value in cell F18. In the formula bar, you will see our formula. Let's copy this formula, but do not include the equal sign. We will use this copied formula shortly. Now delete the formula in the formula bar, then click on the Insert Function button. Our Insert Function dialog box appears. In the search for a function, enter if error and click on Go. You will see in the Select a Function text box the if error function. Click on this function and click on OK. Now our function arguments dialog box appears. We have two arguments we need to populate. The first is our value. Paste the copied formula into this box. Tab to the next box, value of error, and type in error in calculation. Since we know this is going to error out due to the values having errors, we do expect to see a value error and the formula results reading error in calculation. Now click on OK. Let's do the same thing for sales tax. Click on cell F15 and copy the formula into the formula bar. Remember to leave off the equal sign. Delete the formula in the formula bar and click on Insert Function. Select the If Error function and click on OK. Paste the formula in the Value text box and enter Error in Calculation in the Value If Error text box and click on OK. Again, as you can see, the sales tax value now reads Error in Calculation. Let's repeat this for Invoice Subtotal. Since the sum function has a built-in filter to remove text from a calculation, it is going to go ahead and sum up all numeric values and display the total in cell F18. Lastly, let's update the price column to use the if error function. Since the price column is in a table, all cells in the price column will now have the if error function. Now that we have all of our if error functions in place, you can see that the invoice total, sales tax, and total all have values based on valid numbers in our invoice. If we remove the error in the discount column, then this price will be updated and all values will be correctly updated. 
The FNA function returns the value you specify if a formula returns the NA error value. Otherwise, it returns the results of the formula. The FNA has two required arguments. Value, the argument checked for the NA error value. Value if NA, the value to return if the formula evaluates to an NA error. In this example, we have a food menu, cells D7 through E11. We would like to type in the food item in cell D4 and return the price in cell E4. Using the combination of the FNA and VLOOKUP function, this is an easy check. In cell E4, let's enter the following formula. Equals if NA, open parentheses, VLOOKUP, open parentheses, D4, this is our value that we're going to be using to look up, comma, D7, colon, E11, comma, 2, comma, false. Next, we're going to enter in the value if NA. This is simply comma, double quote, not found, double quote, close parentheses. When we hit enter, as you can see, cell D4 shows not found. That is because we do not have a value in D4. So let's put in a value in D4. We'll put in pizza. And when we hit enter, the result is now $10.99. If we put a value in there that does not have a value in the menu, such as donuts, you will see that the result is not found. The FS function checks whether one or more conditions are met and returns a value that corresponds to the first true condition. IFS can take the place of multiple nested IF statements and is much easier to read with multiple conditions. The IFS function has two arguments that are required. Logic test, this is what we are testing, and value if true. This is what will be displayed if our logic test is true. A good rule to follow is to specify a default result. Enter true for your final logic test argument. If none of the other conditions are met, the corresponding value will be returned. In this example, we want to find the value of our salespeople based on their weekly sales. We will create a formula that has a value to check against the weekly sales in column B and return a status value. To check the salesperson's status, we will use the following formula. Equals if S, open parentheses, B2 is greater than or equal to 5,000 comma, amazing, comma, B2 is greater than or equal to 3,000, comma, great, comma, B2 is greater than or equal to 2,000, comma, good, comma, B2 is greater than or equal to 1,000, comma, fair, and our last argument will be true. This is our default, if no other value is found, comma, poor. Close parentheses and hit enter. Now we have created a status formula for each of our salespeople, and the status can be updated each time their weekly sales change. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Comment below if you would like to see examples on a specific topic. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.